Hi, my name's Fred. I drink beer. Welcome to Beers from the Basement, where I drag up dusty old bottles from my basement and we enjoy them together. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Beers from the Basement. This episode, um, I don't have a catchy name, it's just Una Brew. Um, I have some bottles from the, the Quebec brewery, um, some of which have been sitting down in my basement for a while, so it's time to drink them. So I'm starting off with the uh, Una Brew 10. You can quite see that, that doesn't, um, writing's a little bit hard to read. This was their 10th anniversary beer brewed in, um, well, released in 2010, um, excuse me, 2002. Um, I've had problems in the past with the corks on this, so we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see if I'm able. Well, this one, this one's gonna come right out, which is maybe not, not a good sign. You can see the cork is pretty well dry. These were unfortunately stored upright. So I didn't plan on aging them for 20 years. So this one is probably flat. Uh, I, um, actually the first, my first beers from the basement, which I didn't, which I didn't record, I didn't do a video of. Uh, well, I just took some pictures and did them on Twitter. I think this was the first beer and that series back in January. So you can see it's supposed to be a, and it's a little, it's darkened from, from age. If I hold it up, I don't know if you can hold it up kind of more to the, to the light, you can see um, it's still pretty golden, but it's very, it's dark. You see, it's not as dark in real life as it is on the, the camera. Um, nose. Um, I'm getting some, some esters and I'm getting a little bit of kind of almost a meatiness, which is a, which is a bad sign. That's when the, when the yeast, the autolization of the yeast, when the yeast, yeast has turned cannibal, it sometimes gives you a, a little bit of a meaty. Meaty flavor. Um, Well, right now I'm not getting no, I'm not getting that in the in the flavor. It's um, what I remember when I had this in uh, um, in January. It was uh, you know it's there's not a whole lot there left. It's kind of you know the interesting yeast character is kind of kind of gone, and that's not to be. It's not unexpected and it is it's not as oxidized as I remembered so that's maybe a good sign so let's take a look at the bottle it says ale on lees which basically means uh, uh, yeast in the bottle um, very special 10th anniversary reserve 10% alcohol by volume Unibrew Chambly Quebec Canada um, on the back, really nothing else. Product of Canada. Brewed and bottled by Unibrew, Chambly, Quebec. Um, there's no, um, so there's no bottling date or, or production date on it. The 2002 was their 10th anniversary, and that's about the time frame that I remember having this. Um, it's, um, it was a beer I really liked, and that's why I bought a case of it. And I'm down to, I think I have, I have, after this, I have one or two bottles left. Uh, so I, I've has, unlike some of the other beers, it's one I've, I've drunk over the years. Though I've had some bad luck with the corks. This one's not too bad, but some of them, they're, you know, they were clearly shrunk enough that the, um, there was a, was a big air gap and the, and the beers were not, were not that good. Not as good as this one. 
Um, I was checking my records and I didn't realize this is actually, I've done, well, this is the, depending on how you count, the 19th episode, the one was a two-parter, um, 19th or 20th, and I've done uh, four um, with Unibrew. Um, well, this is the fourth with Unibrew, I should say. I did, uh, um, past history on, on these is I kind of they're, think they're not too bad when I open them up and then kind of by the, um, after they've uh, warmed up and breathed a bit, I don't like them as much. So we'll see if that holds true. I'm gonna pause here, get some pictures, and, um, and then we'll come back with it. I'm gonna do them slightly out of chronological order, um, just because. It's not that they're all, it's the, the age, the relative time period isn't, isn't all that important here. So I'm going to do the 15th anniversary next. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back with my Unibrew 10, or 10th anniversary beer. And... I say I think I'll get through about half of this one. It's um, it's enjoyable um, to to a point. Um, I say there is a little bit of I'm guessing is autolization of the yeast, and so there's that kind of meaty flavor. And I guess if you like Marmite or Vegemite, it might be right down your alley. Um, not not that salty, but uh, kind of a little bit of that flavor. Anyway, so I'm going to move along to the next one, which is the uh, the 15, the Unibrew 15, which is their 15th anniversary beer. Celebrating our 15th anniversary, Ale on Lees, 10% alcohol, Unibrew, Chambly, Quebec, Canada. And nothing, nothing else... Uh, Oh, uh, there, Product of Canada, January 6, 2006, on the side, very, in fact, I should, I didn't check the side of the other one, is that, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a strange place, it's there on the kind of lower bottom, this is Product of Canada. Uh, and January 6, 2006, so. I had said 2007, so I'm a little, um, you know, a little bit off on my years, so you might need to subtract a year. Now, I don't know if you remember, one of my uh, videos actually broke the cork. Uh, had to pause and go find a corkscrew. Well, yeah, I think I got a little something on that. We'll see how this one does. Well, let me try it first by hand. No, it's gonna, it's gonna come out. And again, it's a little, it's not as bad. Hold the two of them up. This is the 10, that's the 15. Not quite as dried, a little dried out. Again, I kept these upright, which, you know, long-term storage of cork bottles, you, you probably should set them on their side, but that has other issues. And, uh, and it's maybe a little more carbonated, not still not much. The color looks very similar. Um, that's the 15 and that's the 10. On the camera, they look, uh, on the monitor, they look much the same. If I hold, I don't know if you can see it, if I hold it up a little bit more where there's some light, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make you all seasick. Um, I probably should have a light I can shine through. Actually, I do. I'll get it on my next break. Um, boy, this has got that... Um, hmm. Yeah, the... the um, Whatever that flavor is that I thought was autolization, um, it's a little bit stronger in this one, which is which is interesting. Um, 
they taste very similar. I would, you know, like to, have, as always, uh, wish I had a reference bottle that was in a, a stasis chamber um, to see how it tasted originally. I mean, that's one of the problems with beer. You go by your memory and your memory of 15 years ago, uh, not only have your taste changed, uh, you know, the, the, the references change. Beers that seemed very hoppy back then maybe don't seem as hoppy today, or beers that were very sour back then are not as sour as some, some other ones you've tried in the meantime. So, so all that's, that's very hard. I'm, um, say, I don't think I've opened one of these in, in years, and, uh, Say I'm a little, little disappointed in this one. This may be a short. I keep saying that. It may be a short video. Um, we'll see what. Um, we'll see what uh, what happens. I may um, say that one. I'm not sure. I'm going to drink much of this one. Yeah, this tent is in much better shape and it's more enjoyable um, after drinking the f after drinking the 15. That reminds me of something somebody once told me when I visited uh, Copenhagen and remarked at how expensive the beers were. You know, you go into a pub and beers are very expensive. And the guy said, well, there's a very um, surefire way to correct that where the beers don't seem so expensive. It's like, oh, you know, it's like a secret coupon book or you, know, you give the secret password and you get a discount. And he said, no, take the train over to Malmo, Sweden, and drink there for a day and then you come back and you'll say, man, the beers in Copenhagen are so cheap compared to Sweden. Um, so the Sunabru 10 is a lot better compared to the Unibrew 15. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even, um, I may take a picture. I'll take a picture of that, but I think that one is, and I'm not even going to bother to finish anymore, which is sad. I think I have most of it, many, many bottles left. So we're moving on right away to edition 2005, which was produced 11-23-2004. Pretty much the same ale on Lees, 10% alcohol, Unibrew, Chambly, Quebec, Canada, brewed and bottled by Unibrew, product of Canada. Um, imported by Unibrew USA, Shelburne, Vermont. Um, so they have their own importer. Um, so this is the one, if I remember before, I lost the cork, I broke the cork off trying to get it out. So we'll see what what happens here. Grab a glass and I, um, no, nope, it's gonna come out, I think. So better luck with corks today. Oh no, that had a nice pop and the cork looks in pretty good shape. So, If I remember, this is a darker beer where the other ones were pale. Now that's got a nice carbonation, nice carbonation to it. So, considering this is older than the 15, uh, nice, nice, nice uh, dark color. If I hold it up to the light, there's really pretty much nothing comes through. Um, I'm just, I'm getting a little bit of esters, a little bit of kind of banana, and maybe a little bit of spiciness, which is probably from the yeast, a little bit of clove. Now that's nice. I'm getting, um, it's hard to describe, but it's kind of a bit raisiny. But it's still, you know, it's tingly on the tongue, and uh, um, 
That's a very nice beer. I will I will finish that one. Well, I'm going to take a take a break here and get some pictures and I'm going to go grab my backup beer because it looks like I, I I might need another one. And uh, we'll see you in a minute. My Unibrew beers it started off with the Unibrew 10, their 10th anniversary from 2001-2002. I say it's 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 past its prime. I mean, lighter beers tend not to age as well, and um, I say I'm getting a little bit of yeasty thing in there. Then I went with the the Unibrew. 15th anniversary, so five years later, and this one is is going to be watering the plant, sadly. Um, even smelling it, I don't want to. It's, um, yeah, the yeast autolization, I think, um, it, it's got a meaty aroma, you know, and I like meaty aromas, but not in my beer. And then the next one, I moved quickly along to the uh, Unibrew edition 15, edition 2005 rather, I'm sorry. And this one is very nice. This is one I will finish and enjoy. It's got some carbonation. It's got some fruitiness to it, so which I assume is from the, from the yeast. And there's a, I should have looked up the recipe to see if they, if they published anything. There, there's something in there, and maybe it's a yeast thing. It's a, it's a good thing that I'm I'm liking. Now I said I would um, see if this works. This may be something that gets gets uh, cut from the video. But I've just got a light. I'm going to hold it up, and you can. Oh, it helps if I turn it on. There. So you see the color, I'll probably blind you with this, this color a little, little bit better. And when I hold that up to this one, um, I'm looking at a monitor and it's backwards. So you can see the light doesn't come through hardly at all. So it's very dark. And that one is, is a little more golden than it looks on the, and it looks almost amber on the, on the video. Um, I don't have a lot of, sorry, I play with my toys. I don't have a lot of Unibrew stories that I haven't told before since this is the fourth video with them. Um, I do, uh, been a big fan of their beers. They, they so, so I thought they started in, thought I read they started in 92. And I first became aware of them in say the mid 90s when I um, I had a client you know back when I had a, a job and actually worked for a living um, at a client in South Florida Pompano Beach Fort Lauderdale area and uh, I would always go and you know check out there were a couple of store liquor stores basically that had uh, unusual beer or wide beer selection you know beyond uh, beyond the mass produced stuff. And this was really, there wasn't much, you know, craft beer at the, at the time. So they were mostly imported beers. I mean, obviously this is a craft, what you would call a craft beer. And so I would buy them. They had them in, in 12 ounce bottles. And, and if you've seen the, these are all kind of special printed bottles, but they're normal ones, Le Fin de Mon, Maudit, um, Troy Pistolis, um, trying to I'm not remembering Blanche de Chamblay they all have very colorful labels you know they all have like a painting on it the uh, um, Don de is one like the Maudit is um, it's sort of like a flying Dutchman legend you know it's a couple of guys in a canoe that are uh, 
destined to uh, paddle their canoe forever until they atone for something that they did. Um, and so there's a picture of two guys in a canoe kind of floating through the air. Um, so that attracted me, you know, labels work and, and I really liked them and you couldn't, but you couldn't get them in California. And then sometime in the late nineties, they started showing up and, um, and there was a, a big push. One of the, the uh, local distributor who carried them was, was really pushing them. And he even, um, and they may, they may still do this, I don't know, but they had at the time, they had six liter bottles and he, he laid in a supply of six liter Madit bottles. And I ended up with friends buying a couple of those. In fact, I still have them, I think, in my basement. Um, they were, you know, would like be something great to turn into a, a end table or a end table lamp or something, uh, along with my two nine liter St. Fleet Home bottles. Um, so and so they were they were big here for a while, and I mean they still are, and it's one of the uh, um, few Canadian beers that of, of interest that we get regularly. Um, and I, as I've said on the videos, on um, and, and in honor of my Canadian ancestors or Canadian relatives, my mother was from Canada. Um, on July 1st, which is Canada Day, um, I try and drink a Canadian beer, and usually that's a, a, a Unubrew. Unu Traditionally, it's a La Fin de Mon, but I'll take whatever I have. In fact, I have a La Fin de Mon already standing by. Um, well, I'm talking, not drinking. That's why you watch these videos, I assume. So I say I, I'm the the ten is um, drinking it in conjunction with the 2005. It's it's I say I'm liking it better. I'm disliking it less. How's that damning with faint praise? I mean, it's not bad. It's very drink. I've had worse beers at the Culminator, you know, that I'm sure I paid a lot more for. Um, but the 2005 is. Uh, it is quite nice. Um, oh boy, I'm running out of stuff to say. Um, got some of the joys of patio and the conversation going on the sidewalk out front. Um, other beers that they have that I like, they, they do a, a wit beer, a Belgian wit beer, the Blanche de Chamblay, Chamblay being where they're located outside of Montreal and um, and I haven't tasted every wit beer brewed in in the US uh, but back in the day that was my favorite and it's still one of my favorites for for an American wit beer and I think it stands up well with the with the Belgian ones though my Belgian friends may uh, call me out on that and I've seen it's now available in cans which seems to be a thing because uh, St. Bernardus wits also available in cans. I have not seen the cans here. Um, and I haven't seen any of their other beers in cans. Um, they did, a, and one I should try, they have a smoke beer called Raftman, and it's, but it's made with uh, peated malt. And I remember I didn't much care for it, but um, I probably should try that again. Uh, we've got a lot of beer. I'm getting a list really long of beers to new beers to try and fortunately I'm spending my time drinking old beers. Well, I'm going to pause here for a minute and I'm going to grab uh, one more beer uh, since I have one that's watering the plants. I'm going to grab uh, the Terrible Terib and uh, I think that's from 2003 and uh, maybe it has a date on it. We'll open that up and see how that compares to, to the other one. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back with my Unibrew tasting. And if you remember, we started off with the Unibrew 10, which was their 10th anniversary beer from 
2001-2002. And um, it's, um, I say, it, I, I liked it at first, and then some flavors I didn't much like, and then um, now I'm liking it back, liking it more, or disliking it less. I followed that up with the, and I'm not even going to grab the bottle, I still have the glass, the Unibrew 15th anniversary, and that's got a severe uh, yeast autolysis problem, basically the yeast turned cannibal, and um, it's, um, I can't even stand to smell it, um, let alone drink it, so it's going to be watering the plants, sadly. And then, then I went with the uh, edition 2005, which was brewed in, uh, I said, but I can't remember, um, actually uh, late 11, 23, 2004, which makes sense. I don't know how long they, they age it. And I really like this one. This one is held up well. It's nicely carbonated. It's got good flavor, no real, Deflex. There's a little bit of a little bit of um, oxidation, but very little, and uh, doesn't detract at all. And so the next, I'm going to try because I, you know, I didn't plan on drinking four 750s of 10% uh, beer, um, but I figured chances are there'd be one or two that were not. Not much drinkable. So I'm going to go with the, the Terrible, Terrible, I guess if you speak French. Dark Ale on Lees, 10.5% alcohol, Unibrew Chambly, uh, Quebec, Canada. Um, on the back, uh, brewed and bottled by Unibrew Chambly, Quebec. Um, product of Canada, September 9th, 2003. So, um, my guess is that leads me to believe the uh, the 2000, the, the 10, which I thought was probably from 2002, was probably brewed in late um, 2001. Now, again, I've had problems with, let's see how it corks. No, that one's going to be okay. Um, Not much of a pop compared, certainly not compared to the uh, 2005. So this is a little bit older, also dark. It's, yeah, it's pretty much not, a little bit of carbonation, but not much. Um, hmm. getting mixed. I'm getting some fruitiness, some dark fruits, and I'm maybe getting a tad of uh, a little hint of meat. Okay, sorry, I was interrupted. I uh, had a beer delivery from uh, Three's Brewing back in uh, New York. And they had some highly recommended Czech style lagers, so I had to, you know, that's like catnip to me, so I ordered some. So they won't be on a beer from the basement, but if you watch my Twitter feed, you'll probably see one. Anyway, so I'm doing the, the terrible, the Terry. And it's got some, some chocolate in there, some chocolatey notes, some, um, you know, some raisin plum kind of. Thing. There's just a hint of the the meatiness that I've, I've actually found in all but the the uh, 2005. Um, it's not. It's so far. It's not objectionable. I mean, I'm re I'm really kind of looking for it. I'm primed for it. So, and that may be just. It's not there. It's psychosomatic. Um, it's not as good. I um, have to compare it to the 10. You know, totally different beer, but um, 
Yeah, it's probably about similar shape to the 10. So the 2005 is the best of them all. I will finish the bottle of that and I will finish some of these, but probably not all. Um, yeah, it's not going to, I'm going to have to, uh, I don't know how many of these I have left, um, but it's not, it's not going to get any better. That, that doesn't go away. You, that's kind of the downside of aging, aging bottle, uh, conditioned beers. Um, you kind of hope you get a nice sherry note, you know, as it oxidizes, um, if you're unlucky, it tastes like wet cardboard, and that tends to be the lower alcohol beers. Um, and if you're un really unlucky, it, it tastes like Vegemite. Um, so, um, trying to think what else to talk about with, um, it's gonna be a short, short video. Um, Unibrew, the company, say they they started in, um, you know, I seem to remember 1992 was the date I read. In about 2004, they were bought by Sleeman's, which is another, was a sort of Canadian regional brewery. Um, and there's always a fear when breweries get acquired, you know, it's like, well, what's the the motive. And in 2006 or 7, uh, Sleeman's was actually bought by Sapporo, a Japanese brewing group. So, you know, technically, I guess these are Jap well, none of these are Japanese beers because they were, they're all brewed prior to that. But uh, again, I haven't noticed any appreciable change. I mean, they haven't, they haven't, uh, in my mind, a Le Fin de Monde tastes like a Le Fin de, like I think a Le Fin de Monde should taste. Um, and they've expanded the product range, which is probably, you know, due to investment from a from a larger uh, being part of a larger group. Like they, so I'm. I think I'm going to wrap this up. This is a short one. I'm I'm the. The uh, terrible, I think, is probably also going to be watering the plants. I may drink a little bit of it. I will definitely finish the 2005, and I'll finish about half of the 10. And then uh, hopefully there's lots of food value, and my plants will love it. Uh, and the alcohol won't. Hopefully the alcohol won't kill them. So, um, I'm sorry if this was a, a little bit of a short video but it's maybe time and who knows when i'm i've said that all along oh this one's going to be short and then i get it all together and it's an hour long and it's like okay i gotta cut through it go through and cut out that cut out that cut out that and you know get it down to 30 minutes is my goal and so who knows we'll see anyway if you enjoy the videos be sure and hit the like button uh, hit the subscribe button um i'm still at i'm been at 34 subscribers for the last couple weeks last week I guess um, so I always always warms my heart when I see my subscriber counts gone up so watch the videos tell your friends tell your relatives tell random people on the street um, if you have people you don't like make them watch it they'll probably bore them to death so um, Anyway, take care, um, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. And in the meantime, good beers to you.